Blessed be the Holy One, who forgives all our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Creator of all, we acknowledge that we gather on the unceded ancestral lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. Lead us on pathways of reconciliation and peace. Welcome to our service this morning. Whether you're here or there, we're all glad to be together in the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to offer our thanksgiving to God, let us confess our sins that God will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, in thought word, and, and deed, by, by what we have done, done and by, by what, what we have left undone. We have, we have not, not loved, loved you with our whole heart, heart. We, we have, have not, not loved, loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. repent. For the For sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Christ have, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, to keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we have received forgiveness, let us forgive. As we have received love, let us love. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord said to me, I chose you before I gave you life, and before you were born, I selected you to be a prophet to the nations. I answered, Sovereign Lord, I don't know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say that you are too young, but go to the people I send you to, and tell them everything I command you to say. Do not be afraid of them, for I will be with you to protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out, touched my lips, and said to me, Listen, I am giving you the words you must speak. Today I give you authority over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. You have not come as the people of Israel came to what you can feel, to Mount Sinai with its blazing fire, the darkness and the gloom, the storm, the blast of trumpet and the sound of a voice. When the people heard the voice, they begged not to hear another word because they could not hear the order which said, if even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling and afraid. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, with its thousands of angels. You have come to the joyful gathering of God's firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, who is the judge of all people, and to the spirits of good people made perfect. You have come to Jesus, who arranged the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that promises much better things than does the blood of Abel. Be careful, then, and do not refuse to hear him who speaks. Those who refused to hear the one who gave the divine message on earth did not escape. How much less shall we escape, then, if we turn away from the one who speaks from heaven? His voice shook the earth at that time, but now he has promised, I will once more shake not only the earth but heaven as well. The words, once more, plainly show that the created things will be shaken and removed so that the things that cannot be shaken will remain. Let us be thankful then, because we receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us be grateful and worship God in a way that will please him, with reverence and awe, because our God is indeed a destroying fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in a synagogue. A woman there had an evil spirit that had kept her sick for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called out to her, Woman, you are free from your sickness. He placed his hands on her, and at once she straightened up and praised God. The official of the synagogue was angry that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, so he spoke up and said to the people, There are six days in which we should work, so come during those days and be healed, but not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Any one of you would untie your ox or your donkey from the stall and take it out to give it water on the Sabbath. Now here is this descendant of Abraham, whom Satan has kept in bonds for 18 years. Should she not be released on the Sabbath? His answer made his enemies ashamed of themselves, while the people rejoiced over all the wonderful things that he did. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So who is this woman that Jesus heals today? She remains unnamed. In fact, we're told very little about her other than that she is a descendant of Abraham. In other words, she's Jewish. And she has been suffering from an illness that has kept her bent over and unable to stand up straight and look people in the eye for 18 years. That's an entire human generation in Jesus' time. Enough time to give birth and have your own child be grown and perhaps even have a child of their own already. I wonder if this woman is a mother or a grandmother. But I digress. The important point here is that this nameless woman has been suffering for a long, long time. But not long enough, apparently, for the leader of this synagogue to think twice about making her suffer longer. I guess we can assume that she's not his mother, given his indignant indifference to her well-being. Does she even come from this village? Or has she traveled from afar on foot, stooped over as she is, picking her way over difficult and rocky paths to arrive at this synagogue where she has heard this marvelous and amazing healer, Jesus, will be teaching? Did she embark on this risky journey alone? Or is she here with other people who support her? Again, I'm digressing. Or am I? This woman is someone's daughter, and possibly someone's grandmother, sister, niece, or aunt. She has a life and stories of her own to tell. She's not just a problem to be solved or an illness to cure. She's a person. That Jesus sees and knows this, you can be sure. The synagogue leader, on the other hand, is a textbook case of a person who can't see the forest for the trees. In other words, he's so focused on the minutia, the small print, if you will, of Jewish law, that he loses sight completely of the significance of the Sabbath, the day of rest. And in the process, he loses sight of this woman's humanity. He's not wrong to want to safeguard the Sabbath. It's worth preserving. There's no such thing as a weekend in the first century. The notion that your God would decree a practice in which you, your family, your workmen and slaves, and even your farm animals would rest for a full day out of every seven 
is looked upon by non-Jews of this time period as decadent. The Romans consider the Jews lazy because they insist on an exemption from certain legal obligations in order to continually practice their Sabbath. In short, the Sabbath is a revolutionary idea in the first century. But what the synagogue official does in this passage, while perhaps adhering to the letter of Sabbath law, although this is debatable, it totally runs counter to its spirit. Avoiding or alleviating suffering is at the very heart of the idea of a Sabbath. So as Jesus knows, alleviating this woman's suffering takes precedence over everything, everything else in this situation. Jesus calls out <clears throat> the hypocrisy of this leader and his supporters, rightly pointing out that they treat their oxen and donkeys with more kindness than they are treating this unnamed woman. When we lose sight of another person's humanity, we marginalize them. In a sense, we take away their name, their unique individuality. If this woman ever was an influential member of her community, 18 years of illness has stigmatized and dehumanized her to a degree that many people no longer see her as a person. In the vernacular of the time, she has become the woman with an evil spirit, hardly a flattering characterization. Sadly, this sort of thoughtlessness isn't limited to the first century. We humans have a long, shameful, and continuous history of associating illness with stigma or punishment for sin or wrongdoing. Remember AIDS, the gay disease? Ronald Reagan, who was the American president at the outset of what is still a global AIDS pandemic, refused to even publicly utter the word AIDS for the first four years of the outbreak. By the time he finally did say the word, AIDS had killed thousands of Americans <clears throat> and would go on to kill hundreds of thousands more. Susan Sontag, in her groundbreaking 1980s book on illness and AIDS, writes, quote, illness is the night side of life. Everyone who is born holds dual citizenship in the kingdom of the well and in the kingdom of the sick. Although we all prefer to use only the good passport, sooner or later, each one of us is obliged, at least for a spell, to identify ourselves as citizens of that other place. As many of you know, I just completed an intense learning experience in an acute rehabilitation hospital not far from here. Like the woman in today's story, many patients in this hospital cannot easily or at all stand up and look people in the eye. Not because they're bent over like she is, but because they're in wheelchairs, unable to stand up due to amputations, strokes, and other illness or injuries. When I first arrived at the hospital, the sight of so many amputated limbs and wheelchairs unnerved me. Like the synagogue leader in today's gospel, all I saw in the beginning were the patient's injuries, which is a form of dehumanization in and of itself. Thanks be to God, I kept going there every day, regardless of how hard I found it, until one day I realized I wasn't noticing the injuries anymore. I was seeing the individuals instead people with hopes and dreams, desires and families, and tremendous courage, adaptability, willpower, and perseverance in the face of overwhelming challenges. I don't want to dehumanize these people again by putting them up on a pedestal. Not all of them were easy to like. We're all fallen, right? 
We all have our shortcomings and failings. But Jesus is Lord and sees through the irrelevant surface details of each and every one of us, straight into our hearts and souls, and right from the beginning, too. He doesn't need time to adapt and adjust like I did, which is one reason among many that he is so beloved among the common people of his time. Or as today's gospel reads, quote, the people rejoiced over all the wonderful things that he did, unquote. The truth is that illness frightens us and reminds us of our own mortality. But as today's gospel shows us, Jesus comes to free us from fear and death, and thus from prejudice, too, if we consent. Jesus places his hands on this suffering woman, and she straightens up and praises God. Hallelujah. Maybe we don't need to know this woman's name after all, because she represents each one of us. Let us stand. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true, true God, God from, from true, true God, God, begotten, not made, of one of being with the, Father. with the Father. Through, Through him all things were made. made. For, for us and for our salvation, salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On, On the third, third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have, will have no end. end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With, with the, the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has, he has spoken through, through the prophets. prophets. We, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hearing the word of Christ who sets us free from our elements, let us pray for all who suffer. For peace on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For John, our bishop, the clergy, people, and ministries of St. Adam, St. Bartholomew, Gibsons and the parishes of Archdeacon of Lougheed and Regional Archdeacon Bevan Kelly Duncan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. For the faithful in every place, especially Escobar Agrian Province of Alexander and its Archbishop, the Reverend Sammy Frazel, Benny Bishop, elected of Northern Philippines in the people and ministry of the mission of St. Thomas Apostle Valley. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The ministry of this parish and the members, especially Thomas and Mary Leung, their family, Christine, Evan, Katerina, Rebecca Lewis, and their family, and our Sunday greeters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for those celebrating birthdays, especially Kareen Adams, Pat Wickens, Elsa Nega. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, the leaders of the nation, and all who in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mercy, justice, and peace in the world, and for the victims of the war and unrested, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, for those who live in them and faith, especially the people and ministries of Faith Baptist Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For students, teachers, and all those who are turning to their study, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For farmers, farm workers, and the abundant harvest, for all who to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in danger from wildfires, violent storms, extreme weather, for all those who work to protect us from danger, for those who work for the climate justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the sick and suffering and all who are in need, especially those who have asked our prayers. Gilbert and Anne, April and David, John and Carla, Jeff, Susan, Kato, Lynn, Rosa, Lena, Matt, Danielle, Toby, Ugric, and Don, La, Julie, and Mel Malcolm, Steve, and Helen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have died, especially Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we commit ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, to you O Lord. God, our consuming fire, hear the prayers we offer this day and continue the wonderful things that you have always done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father but by me.
God of glory, receive all we offer you this day as a symbol of our love and increase in us that true and perfect gift. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, gave few thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, we pray, Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with the body and in blood of your Son, and given, and given us, us hope and steadfastness in our, in our life as a parish. As a parish. You have, you have instilled, instilled generosity, generosity and, and compassion within, within us and among us. Encourage, encourage us to hold fast to this within our, within our parish, and, we'll and fill us with vision and courage as we seek to be more deeply connected with our wider community and our neighborhood. neighborhood. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit to seek your justice and peace through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have a very special presentation this morning. As some of you know, a certain member of the parish went to Camp Artaban, and now she's going to tell us about her experience at Artaban. Here, come on up here. There you go. Hello, so Maka. Um, it wants to sing a few songs that she learned from Artaban. Okay. Oh, the Lord is good to me, so I thank the Lord indeed for giving me the things I need, the sun and rain and the apple seeds. The Lord is good to me, the apple seeds. Amen. <laughs> come all ye people, come praise your maker. Come all ye people, come praise your maker. Come all ye people, come praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all. Love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all. And love all humankind as you would love yourself. And love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and mind and love all humankind. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. The moose's name was Fred. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. He liked to drink his <laughs> juice in bed. There was it. The moose's name was Fred. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. He liked to drink his juice in bed. Okay, PJ. It's going to be the bumper song, okay? Yes. I'm taking on my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm taking on my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? Ow, it stung me. I'm smushing up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm smushing up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? You. It's all over me. I'm licking up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm licking up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? Oh, I feel funny. I'm puking up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm puking up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? You, it's all messy. 
I'm mopping out my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm mopping out my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? There was a boom chicka boom. There was a boom chicka boom. There was a boom chicka boom. That's a boom chicka boom. There was a boom chicka rock a chicka rock a chicka boom. There was a boom chicka rock a chicka rock a chicka boom. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One more time. One more time. But this time. But this time. Janitor's job. I got a broom chicka broom. I got a broom chicka broom. I got a broom chicka broom. I got a broom chicka mopper chicka mopper chicka broom. I got a broom chicka mop chicka mop chicka broom. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One more time. One more time. This time. But this time. Wish card. I got a broom, chicka broom. Broom, chicka broom. I got a broom, chicka broom. Got a broom, chicka broom. I got a broom, chicka screech, chicka screech, chicka broom. I got a broom, chicka screech, chicka screech, chicka broom. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One more time. One more time. But this time. But this time. Louder. Louder. There was a bloom, chicka bloom. 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 There was a bloom, chicka blossom, chicka blossom, chicka bloom. There was a bloom, chicka bloom. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One more time. One more time. But this time. This time. Quieter. Quieter. I am astounded. This is a young lady who not that long ago was afraid to look around behind her mom. Well done. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Are there any other notices? Please stand. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our souls. May the blessing of the holy and undivided Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround and unfold you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go into the world to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.